All right, so the, uh, we have seen the nuclear binding energy, which is, oh my lord, much, much more than the energy involved in the regular chemical reaction, much, much more, okay? Now, um, the every nucleus has a unique mass defect and also have unique uh, binding energy. For example, a uh, small atom have a smaller mass defect because they don't have a lot of mass, so small mass defect, so smaller nuclear binding energy. But the larger atom, like fluorine compared to helium, of course, uh, has a higher mass defect, of course, and higher nuclear binding energy. Well, that is mean that heavier nuclei is more stable than a smaller nuclei? No, not at all, right? Because this amount of mass defect hold much more nucleons together, right? Much more nucle uh, nucleons together. Uh, 9 proton, 10 neutrons. In helium, it's only 2 proton, 2 neutrons. Don't need a lot of nuclear binding energy to hold these together, right? So when you compare... Um, nuclear binding energy, who is more stable than who? Uh, you have to look at the number of nucleon in that nucleus too. Give you some examples. So if you want to compare, if you like look, uh, watch the Olympic, right? the uh, Olympic lifting, nuclear and jerk, right? Uh, let's say if a, a, a hundred, so let's say a 200 pound athlete can lift 300 pound uh, barbell versus a small athlete who weighed 100 pounds, so like uh, uh, two times lighter, can lift only 200 pounds. Can you say that the bigger athlete is stronger? Well, if you want to uh, talk about the absolute strength, yes. But if you compare to his or her body weight, the 100 pounds athlete can lift twice his or her body weight, while the 200 pounds athlete can lift only 1.5 1. to 200, 300. So only one and a half pound, a uh, half time his or her body weight. So that's why uh, in Olympic lifting, there are multiple weight classes. <laughs> okay, so you have to look, compare the lift and uh, the body weight. Same thing here. The nuclear binding energy have to be compared to the uh, how many nucleons are there. All right. So if you do uh, nuclear binding energy per nucleon, uh, for fluorine is 7.8 uh, mega electron volt per nucleon. So mega electron volt is another type, uh, another unit of another type of unit of energy uh, besides joules. Um, and yep. So. Anyway, so fluorine 7.8, uh, but helium 7.09. So fluorine is more stable than helium. Okay. So, oh, oh hold on. Um, nuclear scientists uh, do some uh, do all calculation, calculate nuclear binding energy per nucleon for all isotope. Okay, and they came up with this graph, and really, really crucial for uh, the nucle uh, nuclear scientists. Okay, so if you take a look here, so what we have plot here on the x axis, there's a nucleon number, which is the atomic, uh, ato um, uh, atomic mass, ne neutron plus proton. Okay, so how many nucleons are there basically? On the y axis, that's the binding energy per nucleon. All right, so they do some calculation in their plot graph. So hydro, uh, uh, there's no hydrogen here because hydrogen doesn't have neutron. <laughs> so uh, deuterium, so right here, not as stable than tritium compared to helium, helium is more stable, and then lithium, carbon is all the way there. Uh, according to this graph, there are three important conclusions that can be drawn, okay? So this is very, very important. The first con uh, for conclusion, if you look at the graph, who has the highest or the most stable nuclear binding energy per nucleon? Where's, where's the highest point of this graph? About right here, about mid-side nucleus, right? The most stable nuclei are mid-weight nuclear, nuclear, uh, with, mid, mid, say one more time, I, my, my mouth. <laughs> the most stable nuclei are mid-weight nuclei near iron 56. So, uh, iron and anything around here, those, those are, uh, the most stable nuclei. All right. The, um, smaller nuclei, the lighter nuclei, not as stable, of course, but can gain stability by undergoing the process that increase their atomic number. So try to go all the way up to iron because it's stable, right? This is stability is right here. This is really stable, but relatively less stable, right? And the heavier nuclei, so right here, can gain stability by breaking down to a smaller nuclei and more stable, all right? The process of uh, combining um, nuclei to a heavy, heavier one and more stable one. We call this process a nuclear fusion. I'm sure you heard about it. And the uh, the process of breaking down 
heavier nuclei to a smaller, lighter one, but more stable. We call this nuclear, you can, can you guess? Fission, okay? If you want to do a nuclear fusion, you're gonna go down here, take deuterium, uh, tritium, lithium, helium. This guy can do fusion because they do fusion and they become more stable and they want to go that's spontaneous. Uh, versus the larger nuclei, if they combine, try to do fusion, I mean, that's a word because the fusion, so let's say tin fusion, you're gonna go, go get herb, uh, like, uh, I don't know what that is, that's Einstein, do erbium, I don't know. Uh, go to bismuth, go to uranium, which is less stable. All these, the heavier nuclei, all you can do, if they want to be more stable, breaking down to a smaller nuclei and more stable nuclei. So this process we call nuclear fusion. Only this guy can do fusion, uh, can do fission. Only this guy right here on the left side can do fusion. Okay, that's the point. All right. Um, let's answer this real quick. So the mass of the of a nucleus is blank, the sum of the masses of its nucleons. Which one? Pause the video, think first. Always less than the sum of the mass of the nucleon because of the mass defect, right? So when a nucleon uh, or the um all the nucleons come together from a nucleus, they lost some mass. So the mass of the nucleus is always less than the sum of the masses of the nucleon. The masses of the nucleon means all proton and neutron combined. Okay. All right. One more. An atom of iron fifty-seven has an experimental experiment has an experimentally determined nuclear mass of fifty-six point nine three five four atomic mass unit. Uh, calculate the mass defect uh, delta m in atomic mass unit AMU. Okay. All right. So let's say that experimentally we got that number, but how much is lower than uh, the calculated one, all right? So iron 57, the calculated mass is gonna come from uh, number of proton and a neutron. Uh, iron 57 got 26 or 26 proton, which is that mass AM, in AMU, and 57 minus 26, that 31. So 31 neutron, that AMU, you know? Total mass, so this, uh, this uh, in theory, iron 57 should weigh that number. Mass different is, so just the different one uh, minus the other, you know, and you get that number, all right? The uh, six fix, so this is one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. So the fourth digit after the decimal, that's the last digit, there's uncertainty. So we have one, two, three, four, so five, round them up, round that right there, so 0.5227, okay? That's a mass defect, all right? All right, class activity number two, question one and two, that's it.